Our next topic will be state space modeling of systems. And this is essentially a different way to transform the equation for a system. And when we use state space, we can use different t tools to analyze it. So we talked about the transfer function. In that one, you have to know your input and your output and put it in terms of just those equations. And this is kind of a, I'd say a more holistic approach. You can model the system as it is and then use another equation to say this is the output. This way you can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So this is a more used for complex systems and it's a very powerful modeling tool. So we're going to talk about that. And first we're going to go back to an example that I hope you remember. The Valerie on a spring system where Valerie is attached to a unmovable box of green tea. So if you don't remember that, here it is. Okay, so you remember the system? Great, so here is the equation that we derived last time. And let's just remember what these things mean. This was the input force that we are putting onto Valerie. This was a spring. force. Technically this is right the sum of the forces and then this was friction. And then on the other side we had the mass times the acceleration. Okay so now you remember kind of where this comes from and we got it into this form and then we took the Laplace transform. But there's another step that we can do. And we're going to use state space modeling to model this. And later on, we'll talk about how we can do various types of analysis on the system. But what we can do, so some people may get confused with, you know, you have x is one state, and we chose that to be our output. But we also have x dot, and that's the velocity, right? So the velocity of Valerie as she's moving. So in some ways, that's another state. So the idea of state space is that we assign states to each of these and we look at each of their dynamic equations separately. So what we can do is say we get confused with these derivatives and we want to just rename them. So we're going to say, we're going to call x of t, which we have here. We're just going to call that x1. And then in this, I'm going to drop the of t's. So hopefully this won't be too confusing. And then let's just say the velocity, which is x dot of t, we are just going to call that x2. Okay? And notice there's actually a relation between x1 and x2 now. Because x1 is x, the derivative of x1 is x2. So we're just going to write this over here as kind of a side note. x1 derivative is equal to x2. So we're adding some changes in variables here. We're, for completeness, we're going to call u of t. We're just going to call that u1. Here we only have one input, but we could actually model multiple inputs here. So for now, we'll just call u u1. Okay, so we have some new equations here. We changed our variable name. So let's first of all just put that into this equation. Okay, so u becomes u1. So we have u1 here minus k is our constant still, x is now x1, b, x dot is now x2, right, x2, and then m, and we have our x double dot, which is actually the derivative of x2, so x2, which is single dot, Take another derivative and we get x2 dot. Okay, so you're following me? So we have put everything in terms of our new equations, and we have we have one x2 dot, but only a first derivative here. Okay, with this expression. And what we can do here now, what we want to do in state space modeling is take each of the states and look at its dynamics. So really what we want to do is find x1 dot is equal to something, x2 dot is equal to something. So you want to find the derivative of each of these states as an independent equation 
And this function should be in terms of these other equations, these other terms here. Okay, well, so let's, let's look at this. So let's try x1 dot. Well, if we look at what we've written here, we see that x1 dot is equal to x2, because that's how we defined it. So we can say, okay, well that is equal to x2. Okay, so that's, we've found the answer to this side. Now, what about x2 dot? Well, we have this equation, right? And we have our x2 dot here. So if we want to write that independently, we can move this m over, divide the whole thing by one over m, and we can get, so we'll do um, one over m u1 minus k over m x1 minus b over m x2. All right, so we found an equation just by renaming our, our variables here. And we have x1 dot equal to something and x2 dot equal to our other variables. What we can see by looking at this is that, well, x1 depends on other states and x2 depends on the other states and the input. So if we want to break down our system, we can see, well, how does the system relate to itself? meaning x1 and x2, because those are states in the system, and how do each of these states relate to the input? So we're actually going to break apart our system a little bit. So we're going to rewrite these. And yeah, we'll do this here. So x1 dot is equal to, we can write it as, we want to know how x1 relates to x1, x2, and u. So let's write those all down. So it doesn't relate to itself. It doesn't relate to x1. So 0 times x1. It does relate to x2, so it's 1, x2. And this does not relate to the input. So 0, u1. Okay, so let's write the same thing here. And here I'll put a little line. So we're looking at, we're changing these around a little bit. And okay, so what about x1? So oh, so this does relate to x1. So we'll do negative k over m x1. And what about x2? Oh, yep, here's something. So negative b over m x2. And does it relate to the input? Yes, by 1 over m. So 1 over m u. And what we can do here is, well, we have x1 here, x2's here. We can actually turn this into a matrix form. So we can write this and we can make these vectors. So we're just kind of changing our notation here. So it's x1 dot, x2 dot, use it as a vector. And then we are going to take the coefficients here and make them into a matrix. So we get 0, 1, negative k over m, negative b over m. And then if we multiply this matrix by our vector x1, x2, Right, in the same order, so first row will be x1, second row will be x2. Then we have these, the, the same expression for this. So what about this last one? Well, we can do the same thing. Model this as a matrix, so 0, 1 over m. And then in this case, there's only u1, so we'll do u1. So we've actually modeled our system in using matrices. And this is a standard form that we can use for our system. The standard form that we use is x equals a x plus b u. And what we've done essentially is x here is a vector. So we have a vector x1, x2. Those are our states. That's what we call them. This is a, i put it up here, a, this is our x, this is our x dot, and this is our b and u. So this is a standard form for modeling in state space. And then we'll talk about the output next. So we've modeled our Valeriana Spring system 
uh, from this original equation and we've put it into a state space form, we're almost there. We need to look at the output now. So this is our system, but what is our output? Before we decided that x, the position of value, is our output. So in the standard controls language, we write x as y. So we'll put it into a form where y is the output, and it will depend on some matrix times the x value, so the states, and it's possible that it might depend on the input value. But first, let's just state that our output, in this case, our output y is going to be equal to x1. Okay, which is, if you remember, equal to x of t. Okay, so that's pretty simple. If we wanted to put this in a form, we have to see how y relates to x1 and x2 and to u. So if we wrote that out fully, we would get y equals to 1, x1, and does not relate to x2, so 0, x2, and does, is not, does not depend on u either, so it would be 0, u1. So if we wanted to rewrite that, we put it in this form, well, we can put this into a matrix and simply write it as, so here's our x1, x2, so, right, 1, 0, right, 1, 2, okay, and then plus 0 times u, 1. Okay, so if we kind of identify the different parts of that, we would call this C, here again, just like before, is X. This is going to be what we would call D. In this case, it's 0. A lot of cases, it'll be 0, but just for completeness, we're putting it there. And then this, again, is U. And in this case, we only have one input, but we could have a case where there's multiple inputs. So we've now put this into our standard form. So this is a standard form. Form, You need to be able to find A matrix. So how does the system dynamics, the state dynamics, depend on the other states? B, how does the dynamics of the states, state dynamics depend on the input? And then our output, how does the output depend on the states and then on the input? And the nice thing about this is that say we wanted to change our output. So instead of looking at x1 as our output, x, the position, we want to look at the velocity. All we have to do is change this. So say we wanted to do that. We want to redefine y is equal to x2, for example. All we have to do is change these two values. So now this is a 1 and this is a zero, and it would change that. So I'll put it back to our original one, but the powerful thing about this setup is that it separates the system itself, so the system dynamics are kind of working on their own, and then you can use this equation to say, okay, what's our output? What are we looking at? So that's the basics of state space modeling, and we'll talk about some more examples later.